Hi, this is Ricky, and I was finally able to test out Return to Home and Waypoint running iNav 7.1 on my Flywoo Explorer. Every other time I tried to do Return to Home, it failed. This is probably starting with iNav 4.0. Um, something weird was with my compass, and it just crashed every time I attempted it. So when I got iNav 7, I was able to attempt it, but I found I had a faulty compass. So I got a new compass. And again, when I tested iNav 7, return to home still did not work, even though I could get position hold to work fine. Let's check out a little waypoint mission. So here's the waypoint mission that we're going to do. Um, let's load it up from my flight controller. So here we have a quick little waypoint mission. So I have three waypoints. Waypoint number one, um, its altitude is 25 meters. And waypoint number two is exactly the same. And waypoint three is exactly the same, except for I added a jump command, which makes it jump back to number one. And if you change this second number to negative one, this this number tells you how many times it wants it to jump then it's going to do this infinitely so i just want it to fly this waypoint mission so once i have that finished i can press the button that says save the mission to the flight controller and then i can say save the mission to the eprom that way it stays loaded when i unplug the battery then when i load it up for our flight let's see how well it does Here's the flight that we have today. So I start off in position hold, then I'm going to fly around the tennis courts. I'm gonna start the waypoint mission and here's two, three, waypoint number one to two, jump back to one, one, two, three, and then I'm gonna start do return to home and it lands right where I started. Don't forget to load the mission by moving the right stick to the top right. And after the mission is loaded, I'm going to arm it. And then we'll take off and see what position hold looks like. Here I am running iNav 7.1, trying to make it go down a little bit lower. This is position hold. I control the altitude with my thumb, but as you can see, it is rock solid. I probably am never going to use return to home with this quad or um, honestly waypoints for that matter. I have so much fun just cruising it around. But in the back of my head, I wanted to make sure all of these things worked in iNav because with iNav like one point something and two and iNav three, I was able to get all of them to work flawlessly. It wasn't until I started iNav four that I started having weird things. Um, again, most of it was due to my to myself having a faulty compass. So typically I just fly this thing around. It flies so good and it is so smooth. Um, so I'm gonna go around here and then I'm going to start the waypoint mission and have my fingers ready at the sticks in case something weird happens. But in this case, it looks like it goes to waypoint number one just fine. It's pretty aggressive on the stop, but it goes to waypoint number two, and you can see it kind of bobbling. I think I think that's because the the pids need to be adjusted a little bit better. But honestly, as long as it's working and not going crazy, 
it's perfectly fine with me. Once I figured it wasn't going to crash, I grabbed my phone and began to record. It's really hard to zoom into it, so it's pretty difficult to see, but hopefully you'll get a good idea of how it flew. This is waypoint mode. I was so pumped that waypoint mode was working. In fact, on this quad with this flight stack, this is the second time that I've ever even attempted the waypoints. Um, the first time was the flight actually right before this, just so I could make sure that it worked. So after it finishes this third waypoint, I'm going to flip it into acro mode and I'm going to fly over to the corner just so I know if something weird happens and it happens to, to go in, um, hopefully there won't be that much damage. But as you can see, I kind of get low because I want to make sure that when I do flip into return to home, it adjusts the return to home altitude and it gets to where it needs and it flew perfect. So once it climbs to the return to home altitude, you can see the little circle that I have. And it just misses it, but it pretty much drops like a rock here. But it made it. So here are the things that I changed. Um, so here I changed the I2C speed from 800 back down to 400. Um, I don't know if that fixed anything since I changed more than one thing. I, I wasn't able to identify if this is what fixed it or not. The other thing I did, which I think was interesting, was in the programming. I made it so that I have two different um, profiles, two different PID profiles. Um, one of them is if I am in either acro or position hold, my PIDs are really cranked up. And then the other one, in every other mode, I have my, um, the PIDs are the default INAV. So looking at this again, here's how I set it up, but it looks like, it almost looks like I could have done this here. It looks like I could have had a different PID value um, for the flight modes. I guess that's the beauty of open source is there is more than one way that you can attempt something. So how I attempted this on my radio is I made a couple of logical switches. So one of them is in logical switch number three. If my transmitter is in either manual mode or position hold mode, three is going to be active. And then logical switch number four is if the exclamation point means if it's not, if it's not this, which means if it is in any other mode like waypoint mode or failsafe mode or whatever mode, then four is going to be active. And then in my special functions, what I did was that if three was active, it's going to be the high setting. So it's going to be 100. So it's going to be this one. If it is not in three and four is lit up, it's going to be the middle setting, which was this one. So it's going to have that. So this is what this looks like in my PID tuning. So right now I'm in acro mode and I'm in PID profile number one. And you can see my PIDs are really cranked up. Um, I wish I could tell you I knew how to tune stuff. I, I don't. Um, I just found somebody's recommendations on RC groups or something, and 
for me in acro mode and position hold, this is fantastic. Um, I don't get any wobbles. I don't get any overshoots. Um, everything is super locked in. My motors aren't hot. So this is, this is fantastic for me. But um, one of the times I tested return to home using these high gains, it completely messed up. And this was after I switched out the compass. So I thought, let me do the return to home and waypoint modes using the default PIDs, which are a little bit safer. So this is, this is weird. This might be something for the developers. I can't pick this. See how it always goes back? It, it, it doesn't ever get it right. So I have to physically move my transmitter so that it switches on iNav. That's just kind of weird. So when I, this is every other mode. So my PIDs are, I guess, the default ones. So if I'm in waypoint mode or fail safe mode or any one of those other flight modes, these are the PIDs that I have. And this is what seems to have made it work. Here's one of the cool things that I'm able to do with my radio. One of the functions I have is this stick command viewer. So when you press that button, it shows you all the different stick commands you have with iNav. And actually, you know, I can scroll up and it has all the commands for um, HD0 and Betaflight as well. So one of the ones that I always forget are the ones that where you load a mission, where the right stick is up to the top right. And then the other one is if you unload it and is if it the, it's at the bottom right. Well, I did this that I thought was pretty cool, is if you move the stick to the top right, Waypoint mission loaded. Or if you move it to the bottom right. Waypoint mission unloaded. So how I was able to accomplish that is by making some more logical switches. So this one says if A is greater than X. So this says if the aileron is greater than 95%, that means it's all the way in the corner. This one says if the elevator is greater than 95, so that means it's up to the corner. And this one says if the throttle is all the way down. So those are my three steps. So logical switch number eight says you have to have both of these. So you have to have five and six. So five and six. So if both of these are active, then I'm going to have logical switch number eight. And then the other thing, the only one I had right here is this little and switch. This one that makes sure that the throttle is, is down. So then logical Switch number eight is if both of them are at the top right. And then for nine, I said, hey, when the elevator is negative 95, that means when it's down at the bottom, um, logical switch number nine. So to do the one that says mission unloaded, it's five. So it's this one. So the aileron's up to the, to the right. But then logical switch number nine is if the elevator is down. And then I still have this one that makes sure that the throttle is all the way down. That's how I was able to get the mission loaded and the mission unloaded.